Donald Trump for president 2024, this time on Bill Whittle Now. I'm Scott Ott with Bill Whittle. And Bill, this is a little thought experiment. Once again, conceding nothing is your position as well as the president's on the 2020 election. But you always have to game out scenarios in the future, depending on what happens. And we've talked about a variety of those. Uh, lately, there's been a lot of noise about the possibility that Donald Trump will uh, run for office again, run for the presidency again in 2024. If he loses in 2020, he is entitled, uh, to, not entitled, but he Legally does have allowed. the option of pursuing a second term. And right now, a lot of the talk has been about how his indications that if he loses, he should seek the office again in 2024, has essentially frozen the opportunities for any other Republican who may want to run in that year. First of all, do you think it's a, a good idea at the upstart for him to say things like that? It certainly would be encouraging. I, I, I know you've already stated this at the beginning, it's going to come out of my mouth and then we'll let it go. I'm not conceding anything. I think he's going to be elected president in 2020. I think the voter fraud is so evident that that's what's going to happen. But with that said, um, it would certainly um, hearten the, the large numbers of people that see Don Donald Trump as the only salvation to end the corruption in the uh, uh, political system. And and that would certainly be an indication to, to keep on fighting from uh, not even from the outsides or not even as political opposition. I think I have to be honest with you. I think if if we make this assumption that Biden is sworn in as, as the um, uh, chief executive, uh, then Donald Trump's great usefulness will come in the years between 20 and 24. That's what I think. In what sense? When, if this catastrophe happens, the the nucleus and I believe the the large majority of the people that voted for Donald Trump voted for Donald Trump because he represented America. Make America great again. We did an episode on him back in I don't know, 2015. And first thing I ever got asked about it was, what do you think of Donald Trump? I said, I like his hat. Um, and so if this were to happen, the 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 overall sense of demoralization that that is already filled the country and will continue to feel the country if uh, Biden is um, is uh, elected uh, then that's going to need that that force needs to be focused and sharpened and grown uh, the challenges in 2020 I'm not, I'm not one of these guys who just blithely says well we'll get them next time if they get away with this, then it will be much, much harder for us to pull this off or ever win another election again. And so we're if that happens, we're going to have to start taking an entirely different approach to things, a really fundamentally different approach to things. And during that four year hiatus, when all of the damage is going to be done, we have to have something that can keep us together, something that can keep the idea of America together. And I think Donald Trump would be much better served focusing as the point of of uh, not even as the point of resistance, because I think that's a childish term. I think the evidence is going to prove that that he was that he was over overwhelmingly reelected. And if it turns out that they steal the government from us, they can take the government. They stole the government, but they didn't steal the country. Donald Trump could be the face of people that love the country and keep that moment uh, and that movement growing and and as I say, expanding and and keep it in opposition to these imposters. And then in twenty twenty four, we'll see. I, I I don't know about this idea of Trump in 2024 for president right now. I don't want to take anybody's uh, spirits away because I think, as I say, he's going to be more valuable between now and then under this nightmare scenario. But what what I do feel is, is that people and their and the and their moments are matched. And Donald Trump and, and his hour were was 2016 and 2020. Uh, whether or not he's able to be the man of the moment four years from now, be considerably older. Uh, is up for discussion. But but right now, if we assume this uh, catastrophe, that's when he's going to be needed the most is in the is in the year or two after uh, this election gets stolen away. And and that's going to mean we need a rallying point and we're going to need a, an entirely different uh, plan. 
Now, normally after each presidential election, they immediately start talking in the media about who might be the next candidate in the next cycle, but the campaign doesn't really start in earnest that far in advance. Uh, usually it's about two years in advance, although it's been getting longer every cycle. Uh, there are a number of people who could leap to mind, and I don't want to mention any names here, as people who have been opponents within President Trump's party of the president who would be naturally uh, attracted to the opportunity to run for president or maybe have even done so before. However, Bill, there's probably also a number of people who have been firmly in the Trump camp and supportive of the president who had been hopeful that the next chance they got, they could run for president, who, if not frozen out at this point, at least have a delicate dance to do until the president announces clearly his intentions. And then if he decides to run, how do you handle that? Uh, those people might as well just go home right now. Um, one of the things we've seen since the night of the uh, selection was the was the uh, large scale. Um, it's not uh, in many cases. It's not quite an abandonment, but but it is certainly a l lack of support for the legal challenges uh, to this election. And if people like, just off the top of my head. Mitt Romney or Paul Ryan or um, or the Bushes or uh, or anybody who was actively anti-Trump, if they think that this is going to mean that what well, Trump lost in 2020, then they're going to have their moment in 2024. They got another thing coming. Trumpism is a term I don't particularly like because I don't think it's an accurate term. What what Trump represents is America, so I'd prefer to call it Americanism. And Americanism is here to stay. And Americanism, part of Americanism. And what created Donald Trump is the understanding that the media headwind and the and the slanders and the ability to control the narrative in the story means that you have to be, number one, you have to have a skin of a rhinoceros, and number two, you have to have a firm understanding, not just a, a understanding, but a firm belief, a core belief that you are up against people who will do anything. And 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 as we've seen, and that is what Donald Trump represents and why so many people love him. He represents returning America to the people. And we are in a life and death struggle for that right now. And that's going to continue. It's going to continue no matter what happens. It's going to continue. If Donald Trump is reelected, there's going to be a monumental amount of work to do. And if he's not, then we're going to have monumental work to do as well under different circumstances. But, but, this, but America is not going away. Americanism is not going away. And I think that uh, that he could be ex most useful in terms of keeping that Trump movement together. Uh, and 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 I think that when you started seeing conservatives in parades and rallies and 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 standing in the street corners in Beverly Hills and forming convoys, you know, two thousand cars long, just spontaneously, that is the Kindle, that's the spark, that's the little ember that's that's being, well, I think it was a wildfire on November 3rd, but that has to be kept alive. And I think he's the perfect guy to do that. Whether or not that means that in four years from now, he's the best choice for a candidate is up in the air right now. But I can tell you this, I am never getting behind anybody that abandoned this president in the middle of this fight, never. And I think I'm speaking for a lot of people. Well, and there's some people who certainly didn't abandon this president. And then there is the one shining example of someone who has never stepped out of line with President Trump, and that is Vice President Mike Pence, who by all accounts would be a natural person to think that he is worthy to sit behind that executive desk in the Oval Office. Um, if your Vice President Trump, or I'm sorry, Vice President Pence at this point, um, how do you conduct yourself publicly, and I think we know the answer to that, but what are you saying to the president privately if you do have ambitions for the office? I, I'm sure they've already had this conversation. I, not only did I think, not only do I think that Trump thought he was going to be reelected on November 3rd, I think he was reelected on November 3rd. Well, actually, the election of the president occurs on December 14th. So I suspect that discussions about Mike Pence taking over for Donald Trump have, have been I, th I think they were understood before Mike Pence took the job. I, I would certainly, if I was, if I was uh, uh, asked to be vice president, I would like to know the feelings of the person who's asking me to be vice president, what their feelings about succession are. And as you point out, uh, we've seen a number of, of cabinet members come and go, a lot of them. 
But Mike Pence has been rock solid from the beginning, rock solid. Uh, I think in many ways, I think I'll just come out and say it plainly. I think Mike Pence would be a better president than Donald Trump. I think he'd be a much better president than Donald Trump, but he wouldn't be as good a candidate as Donald Trump. And therein lies the problem. Because he would just have a hard time ever becoming that better president. Well, it's just that Mike Pence, Mike Pence is a serious thoughtful, extremely well-educated, dedicated, patriotic man. And he is filled with the kind of discipline and control that, that has cost Donald Trump many supporters, potential supporters anyway. But Mike Pence does not have the ability to fire people up. And I also believe and that's not his fault. That, that the, 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 we, we've talked so many times about what Donald Trump costs. Well, what Mike Pence costs, what, you, what, what the cost of that gravitas and, 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 and prudence and all of these great qualities, it, people like that tend to be not particularly flamboyant. And flamboyancy is, is something you want in a, a, car in a candidate. Um, but he... He does now have the benefit, certainly, of the loyalty of the of the uh, Trump supporters, and I and I con continue to be one of them. I would back Mike Pence in anything he did, and I and I would without question vote for him for president. So it's possible that Mike Pence would assume the mantle, and having seen how well and how loyally he performed under Donald Trump, the enthusiasm for Trump could, I think, easily be transferred to Mike Pence in in a way that he never could have gotten there by himself. Final question, and we'll have to keep the answer to this one pretty quick. Uh, let's assume uh, not only does Joe Biden get elected to the presidency, but Donald Trump uh, publicly announces he's not going to run in 2024. However, he is still going to be a public presence. And, you know, almost e whether he wants to or not, a leader of the Republican Party nationwide. Do you think he is, would be better served by doing that by uh, as a business person, going back to what he was doing before? or as the chairman of the RNC in the public face of republicanism? If they get away with this, you are now faced, and again, I'm not, I'm not going to go with that term Trumpism. I'm going to go with Americanism, which is currently uh, the face of this movement is Donald Trump. If, this, if they pull this off, this, this monumental scale of, of fraud, then, then, Republican, then the Republican Party, as we understand it, is going to is going to go to it when I say as we understand it, I don't mean the Republican Party's going into the the dustbin of history. Uh, the name and the brand will live on, but that but that gentleman Jim kind of leadership thing that's gotten us into all this trouble. That's standing by and watching as they steal these things from underneath our noses, and and as we pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to teach these progressives and these and these radicals to teach our kids how to hate us. That whole attitude, that whole kind of well, you know. Uh, we're we're above that, and we're and we're and we're far too we're far too civilized and polite to ever get our hands dirty fighting for this country. Those those people have finished. They have no ground to stand on. The Republican Party, the Republican Party started as a radical party designed to bring freedom to people. That was its express, defined purpose was to bring freedom to people, and that's what it did. And and that kind of fiery commitment to freedom rather than this defensive walk back this kind of this kind of chancellor of the university sort of well i'm going to gather my robes and i'll retreat to my uh, to my faculty room Th those days are over and rightfully so it's that attitude it's that it's that it's that mitt romney paul ryan attitude and john mccain was essentially didn't vote any differently from the democrats you know, those days are gone and and good riddance to them. There will be some fragment, some rump fragment of of people like Bill Crystal and all the rest of these sanctimonious virtue signaling losers who will continue to say, well, this was a repudiation of the Republican Party and 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 and, and that uh, Americanism is represented by Trump is was a catastrophe. On the contrary, I've never seen ever in my life have I seen uh, Republicans come out with a kind of enthusiasm and open, open uh, exuberance that I saw, especially during 2020. And so that's not only where the future is, that's where the future should be. And these these Brooks Brothers Republicans um, who who I have it unreliable, very reliable first person authority from somebody who I trust enormously, a person of considerable authority and power that 
that campaign managers uh, for Jeb Bush spoke with him about getting a, a certain amount of support and during the course of a thousand dollar a plate dinner expressed this is in 2000 leading up to 2016 openly said that Hillary Clinton would be a far better president than Donald Trump this is coming from a Republican trying to raise money and trying to um, gain uh, support and that attitude is dead and gone and and it deserves to go and I think that uh, that Look, I don't think we need to have a retribution campaign. This is a free country. We believe in free speech, and you're entitled to believe whatever you want to. But if the, if those if those um, Lincoln Project type Republicans think that they're the future, they are sadly mistaken. They are not going to have any ground to stand on. And the experience of people who turn coat in order to uh, curry favor uh, would be a history lesson they probably should have read before they did this. Benedict Arnold thought he'd be welcomed with open arms uh, by the British um, because of his return to the allegiance of the king. But the people whose respect that he so craved looked at him as a traitor, even though they were, even though he came over to their side. He's, he's a traitor. That's what he is. I'm not saying that the that the um, Lincoln Republicans are traitors. I'm just saying that they are. They are. If they were ever really on the on the pro-American wagon. They are way, 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 way behind the curve. And this business of 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 basically do pulling a Mitt Romney and and you know and voting for impeachment. Th th this Scott, this is those people, Romney and, and Paul, all of them, those people are new Coke. That's what they are. You have you have Coca-Cola, the best brand in the world, which is conservatism. You've got Pepsi, which was growing. And so you had Coca-Cola say, we're going to ditch this incredibly powerful and popular formula, and we're going to go make something that tastes most like, more like Pepsi. And New Coke was a catastrophe because the Coca-Cola drinkers didn't like it, and the Pepsi-Cola drinkers didn't like it either. It tried to be in the middle, and there is, there is no middle. So they are done. I'm utterly convinced of that, and the future is going to be going to belong to the person who who best understands that the reason people get fired up on this level is because they believe their country can be returned to them. And if this catastrophe happens, that is going to be staving off despair and 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 uh, resignment will be the number one job of whoever steps into that vacuum. And I can't think of a better person to do it than Donald Trump. Thank, thank you to the citizen producers at BillWhittle.com who've made this program possible. If you'd like to become a member, just go to BillWhittle.com, click the big green button that says become a member. If you'd like to make a one-time donation to keep these messages coming, you can do that from the homepage there too. For Bill Whittle, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks for watching.